Thank you, Sheldon. Hello, everybody. Oh, it, oh, it turns, turns red, red instead of green. green. Okay. okay. All right, All right I've, got I've got it. it. Are we good? Yeah, we got it. Can you see me? No, I want to hear this. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Now, now, Nick, Nick is, is next, next to you, so, so what do I do? do? On, on top, top of you. you. So what, so what do, do I do, do now? Just look at my body picture. Look at my body pictures. Look at the right side. Yes. Okay. Hi. Good morning. Hey. No, no, no. Don't look great. Hello. 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 Okay. 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 You ready? <coughs> yes. Hey. Um, we, we started, started last week. week. We were headed to Ruth. Y'all remember that? We headed to Ruth. Mm -hmm. um, but to get to Ruth, we had to go back a little ways and um, uh, talk about how we, uh, talk about what what happened to Why is it that we headed to Ruth? In other words. Um, and, and we started last week, week talking about, about Judah and Tamar. If, if you remember, Jacob had. Um, Another um, son by his wife Leah and one, well, well most of them were by Leah and one was Benjamin by Rachel. Rachel. So, so one, one of the sons, sons though was Judah. Judah. And, and Judah um, is, is a, the, the lineage, lineage from which Christ comes. Um, Judah, Judah married a I believe it was a Canaanite woman. And she died. Remember? I remember that. Mm -hmm. And he had uh, three sons. And he gave two of his sons consecutively. One gave one to Tamar. Um, Tamar married one. That one died. He gave the other one to Tamar. That one died. And his third son, I believe it was one. Something like that. He was younger. And he said to Tamar, to her home, saying, Okay, when he gets big, um, you can have, he will marry you. And this has to do with the deliberate uh, law that speaks of the, uh, if, a, if a wife, uh, if the wife's husband dies, and then her brother in law um, marries her and he redeems. Whatever was that brother's wife as a son, and then that son would carry on the lineage of the dead husband. So, so follow with me so far. Yes. 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 Alright. Yeah. 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 No, I have not proved it. I'm in Genesis. I'm in Genesis 38. 38. So, so, so I, have answers, I have any questions, questions from what we talked about last time? Okay, okay. The, the first one dies and the second one gets the white. Um, so, if it goes through, then the second has no women. If what goes through the second time? If she marries the second son and all that go it is attributed to this first brother. Well, just the first one is, is from the Jewish law. Is it, is, is just the first one is not relationship. Okay. So we kind of replace this. Yeah, in a way. In a way. Yeah. It gives that brother's line purpose. Hello, Ray, are you on? Yeah, but I'm having problems. You can't, you can't see, see us? us? No, it's the uh, heat. It's like I die on you. It won't let me switch around your comments. Well, you, you have joined. You're talking to us. I know it's here. It's exciting. I'll fix it, but I'm here. Okay. okay. All right. So, so are there any other questions? questions? In the meantime, who has a question? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, what's, what's the purpose of this line going, going on? on? It's, it's just, just the if, Jewish... If it was meant for him to die, what's the purpose of the line going on? It's just a Jewish, it was just a Jewish law. Yes. Yes. Um, Whatever it was. Um, Deuteronomy, um, 25.6, sort of is where that uh, is explained. Do we need to go there right away? Deuteronomy 25.6. Yes. Yes. Oh, so she has a trial. She names him after the dead husband. And then that's it. And he inherited uh, anything that that dead husband had. As a matter of fact, he didn't answer anything like that. But then this is a Jewish. Custom law. Yes. Was, was it something, something that God ordained? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't have the answer, answer to that. But I have several people in the background. I'm sure you can find that out. We're just sitting there. But who well, texts me in the middle of the week for mail and say, I just saw, I just saw a show on Hallmark about. Uh, the same thing. Well, well, I mean, Leah. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's, it's all this week. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. I said, really we just talked about it. We just talked about it. But you know what's interesting? <laughs> we ended last week, we talked about, um, you know, why she disguised herself and that, you know, the reason. And the, the movie kind of brought the same kind of, well, I got the same kind of perspective that, there was a reason he brought his brother and the wife together. Yeah, you know, she said something. She said, you know, that, that was part of what um, the Jews, Jews believed that uh, before he died, he would go to someone he loved and show himself. Something she said. Right. Yes, and say goodbye. And he went to his brother. So, yeah. Okay. So, that was great. That was a good show. Very interesting. Huh? The first thing, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, we know the rest. I mean, oh, so you saw it too? Yeah. yeah, but you could predict the whole thing. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, anyway, I just thought, thought that, that was kind of uncanny that, that we've been thinking about this. Got it? Nick? Nick? Thank, Thank you. We need to do that one because I want to. Nick, you were going to say something, please? No, no, no. Okay. He was a strategy. Okay. Uh, it's, it's kind of uncanny that that, that came on um, right, right then and there. Uh, even, even to the point where, uh, you know, the, the, the ceremony where um, he was unlatching the sand, the shoe from the guy, or she, she was, was, was unlatching the shoe um, from the brother in law who was supposed to marry her, and was getting ready to cast it away to spit. Right. Um, um, and, and, and the part of the world behind that is that, you know, you, you will be known from this point on, on um, he of the house of the moose shoes or something like that. Well, well, I went to this and it, it has all that stuff in there, so they were trying, trying to be fairly um, consistent with, with what the Bible said. But, but, but anyway, the, the issue with the shoe is that the fellow who got the shoe, would, that, that would be his sort of like, the, it's almost like, like your word is wrong, it's the shoe is a reminder that you gave up, up. this is what you gave up, you gave up all of this right. That, that you could, could have redeemed. redeemed. You gave up this lady, you gave up the land, you gave up everything that could have been redeemed. Anyway, we still had to do though. And part of what we were discussing is how how did they do that? Did it, how did Boaz get here? And you know, Boaz was a um, Jewish guy. Yes. Yeah. 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 Of course, there's stuff that happened before, before Judah, of course. As a matter of fact, I don't know um, the um, But um, Tamar's first born, oh, it's her second, second son. Remember, she had twins. Tamar had twins. The second one is just a little bit of an ancestral Any questions about last week? Because we're going to go through a lot this week. I'll let know she shut up on 
and in you know the Hebrews were very meticulous about trying to keep quote unquote pure lines in the natural when they were married, don't marry a shoe like that shoe like woman, don't marry the skin like woman, don't marry this more 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 vibes, don't marry this kind of right woman. They were very meticulous, and yet. If, if you look, look at the line, line that's what I'm, I guess, guess what I'm getting in terms, terms of rule. If you look at the line from which the Messiah comes, there was lots of stuff going on. And, and so, so the issue we ended up last time, we said that, and, and we know that all things work together. If, if, if our intent is the righteous one, always, it works for the good. All those things work to the good. So, Any other questions regarding Tamar? <coughs> There's lots of stuff that happened in between here and here. But that's not the goal today. That's the goal of Genesis 19. This will be on the other side of the picture. Remember, a lot separated and eventually settled in Sodom. You can remember the stories of Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, there was lots of uh, debauchery and just bad stuff going on in, in the cities. And if you will remember, um, when Abraham was in the desert, the, you know, he had the visitors, the angels who visited him. And they were on their way there. And they were on their way to destroy the Abraham. And Abraham said, perchance, you know, if, if you find um, 20 people in the city, find 10 people in the city, blah, 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 which you say, we say, we say. But that's where they were headed. They were headed to. Um, Sorry. And then if you remember also, when the angels got to the city, when the messengers got to the city, um, the people, the men of the city, um, told Lot to send them out, you know, because they wanted to, this is part of the democracy, they didn't want to have sexual relationships with them. And Lot says, no, I have two daughters who never, ever know the man. Let me give them to you rather than you doing this thing. And, um, the men, the men of the city, wouldn't even accept that. And they wanted what they wanted. And, and so the angels uh, helped Lot, his wife, and two daughters get out of the city. I'm, 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 going, I'm paraphrasing Lot here, so you're going to have to ask specific questions if you have questions. Um, and so they told him, they told him, don't look at just run. I mean, literally, run. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. And um, Lot's wife happened to be bad and turned into a bit of salt. I'm not quite sure how that happens except that they were talking about fire and brimstone. And, you know, that equates to a volcano or actually fire and brimstone coming from the sky as in the leftovers of the comet. I'm not sure. All it says is fire and brimstone rain on the city. And um, as it was why I threw back that she's disobedient. She turns into a pill of salt. Moving along now. Lot went to this, I'm not there yet, Genesis 19. Lot went to this um, place called Zoar. And it really is a place of little significance. Um, and that's the meaning of the word. Uh, it's a little place. Uh, but he didn't stay there uh, because it was one of the uh, five or so cities that. Uh, that had been, it wasn't just Sodom and Gomorrah that was gonna, were going to be destroyed. It was about five cities very close to the same um, region. And so a lot went into the mountains um, to get away. And that's where you usually settle. So looking at a lot, uh, I'm sorry, a lot, a lot, 19, um, Genesis, uh, 19, um, so, this is saying that when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered what Abraham said. And he got God out. God went up to Zoar. Z-O-A-R, which means it's place it means insignificance. It's insignificant. So, 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 so. 
and he brought him out, and he and his two daughters. Again, yeah, because they thought, well, you know, jar might get rained on too. So it was okay. This, this does not say how much time um, occurred. Um, and I don't know that it, it, it makes, makes a difference how much time occurred. It's the intent of the actions that occur that's the you know, most important. So, so the sisters start, start talking, talking, and the sisters just will do. And, and they, they said, if God has taught us everything, see, you know, they, they, they didn't have the perspective of their world was right like there. That, that was the world to them. And, and so, so they thought the world had come, come to the end, end in a sense. sense. In a sense, it's, it's, it's one, one way of looking at it. And as I said, it's just, just you and me, sister, sister, and our father, father in law. How, how, how are we going to repopulate? How are we going to carry on our father's not manage? Um, if, if, if there are no other men uh, or that, that we can, that we can um, have, have sexual relationships with. And, and so, so as this is just, uh, uh, well, the firstborn. Said to the second one, you know what, what we could do is let's, let's get a little drunk, let's get a little high, and let's, let's go in and sleep with him. I'll go first. I'll go first. I'll go first. And that's, that's what happened. happened. First of all, we didn't lie. I had no, no idea. idea. We went in by the game, game in, all the way in by the left. Lot was, I didn't know. So say, next, next night, night, I don't know, verse 23, I don't know, I'm 33, I don't know, I'm not fast. And they, and they made their father drunk again. And on um, verse 34, first of all, I said, I did it, I went in last, last night, it's your, your turn this morning. Uh, it's your turn tonight, sister. Um, you're going to do the same thing so we can preserve our family line. Ooh, a <coughs> and, and they did. did. And, and both the daughters uh, became pregnant by, by their father. I have a question. question. Yeah. Oh, well, well, now we feel like that's like, like, like uh, when you do something, something like that. that. You, gotta, you gotta remember that. that um, but the customs, customs and the culture help to define what we, we call as white right living, in, in a sense. sense. Mm -hmm. and, and so, that's, that's not right, right living for, for this time, time and place. You know, I'm glad, glad but, you know, come but, but, you know, it, it was allowed, apparently it was allowed, because God allowed, allowed it. Um, right, right living, then, relates to what was the sister's dead. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I thought the other interesting thing, thing that um, hopefully one of you guys had some, some insight into or, or comments if you guys uh, do not, was the fact that, that it's, it's, it's like, like women took things, things into, into their own hands a lot. Look at Sarah. Look at Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, it, 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 it wasn't like it was one, one, one time, time or twice. It, it was all down, down through the line. line. Women <clears> took action. Yeah. A lot. Now that, that doesn't mean that, you know, know who said, said it was right and wrong, wrong about that's not, that's, that's not the issue. issue. Right. Um, whatever, whatever they did, did, did it depending on the motive and the intent, if, if it was righteous in, in terms, terms of, of their, their intent, intent in the end, it, it, it turned out okay. okay. Which I'm kind of grateful for. But sometimes, sometimes don't we do that now? You yeah. figure that the husband's uh, kind of lag behind a little bit. Yeah. Next hand. Next hand. Next hand. Yeah. Um, and I just want to add that <clears throat> all these people are also symbolic of um, shifts in consciousness and aspects of consciousness that you use us. Um, so even in the situations that sometimes they find themselves in are they're kind of like the some of the first within the cycle of this history in a way to really embody what that shift or transformation um, was in, in the physical home. Um, and they represent that exact same transformation or aspect as they did you. Yeah. 
That's what I was getting. Yeah. Remember last week we said the Bible is the story of us. Right. And so, so all of these aspects are parts of us. You hear that Pastor talk about the voices within us, mm-hmm. the, the, the voice of the community, voices within each of us. us. Um, all of us have aspects um, of, 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 of these folk throughout the biblical narrative in us. So, so yeah, kind of, uh, these thoughts throughout the biblical narrative. Did you have a comment, children, or are you just thinking? We'll let you think if you keep on thinking, man. All right. Any questions right now? Any other questions? questions? I got one more thing. Yeah. I just want to add to what I just said. Um, anytime somebody does something truly original, um, either within a particular cycle history or within a particular context, what that person does then becomes available for everyone else. Yeah. So they add to the total. Through is no, that's not the truth of it. You can contain 
the confusion a little bit with their fall to the commandments. And that's, that's why you have commandments. I can believe that. So, so if you, if you, in an in our civil society, you say, I don't, don't care what you think, think. I, I care about behavior. Because, because that's, that's the only ground on which the community can really kind of deal with everybody's confusion, searching, etc. All right? Mm -hmm. well, we're trying to go past that. To say, oh, but the delay. If you want to get past the confusion, if you want to just manage the confusion, you can do stuff like you say things like that, you have laws, you have all that structure. But if you want to be free, but get past that, to the wholeness that's available, and then you have to see, you have to go backwards from that and see where it starts. In other words, we have to define ourselves not about what the community has said and what has become the cliche. But if we have right intent, um, we have to understand and know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that what we think, what we meditate on in our thoughts, even before they become action, get into the macro. So we can, we, 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 once we know who we are, um, we, we can't judge ourselves by the folklore or the, or the, or the or, or, or what our culture um, um, says. We've got to judge, judge ourselves by what the creator says. But I think it's, it's also, I'm not comfortable with the term judge just because I wouldn't use it. If at the same time, life is not about getting there, it's about being intent to take the journey toward if you get there, you get there. If you're one who becomes like you find, if you, if you if a sense, if you have a sense in your life less than a real strong change and feel that you're living in the truth, that's that's we've said it here a thousand times. It's taking the journey that's if the if the intent is honest, that that's the real what I want to say. It's not how far you get. get. It's the fact that you're doing it with some honesty. So, so even you're living in some confusion, but learning, maturing to the point, I guess you could say, is to keep your mouth shut. Sort of thing. Well, judging may my word, but yeah. it, 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 it could be being, you know, you, 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 you use, use a different, different standard uh, to look at what you say, what you think, and what you do, as opposed to. Um, the standard, standard that, that we grow up looking at, I want to know what other people think of me and I want to, I want to, I want to act accordingly because I want to, I want them to think highly of me and all that stuff. It's, it's a different standard. standard. And it kind of push you out by yourself sometimes, a lot of times too. When you hold yourself to that different standard. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, we'll, we'll start with that right now. And, and you remember, we were to be talking about a dual kind of thing, we talking about twins and things. This is still a dual kind of relationship here. Both daughters are not pregnant at the same time. Um, Firstborn um, son, she called Moab. And, and then Moab became the father of the Moabites. And the reason I bring that out is because Ruth was a Moabite. It's it means son of the uh, it means, means of his, his father. father. That's, that's, that's the meaning of Moab, of his father. So he's. Um, I got Go. <laughs> so, so what the daughters symbolically were doing um, was allowing themselves to be integrated with the, you could say, the spiritual lineage of what their father represented. Yes. yes. Um, so, so they had, had two, two different children, and, and one, one became the uh, sort of mother, mother of the Moabites, or of the Moabites. Moabites, just, just like the Hittites, the Jebusites, and all the other Hittites in the Bible, represent a particular personality of consciousness that produces a slightly bigger total experience of yourself. Um, and, and just as a side note, yeah, yeah. so the, when, when everybody's killing everybody, everybody in the Bible, and then our armies are moved through, and uh, an entire group of people, an entire race, are being wiped out, out. It, is, it, is it is that everywhere that, that aspect of your personality or your energy, energy that exists in you, you it, it is being, it, it is just a general to your own probability to even make 
spiritual progress. It's just really good. It's just really good thing. Whatever is in the ego that, that, that becomes the barrier, you destroy. Whatever, uh, it, it, it can be an attribute, it can be an attitude, it can be a type of um, quality within you, but if it, if it, if it, if it comes to your point is move it. You destroy it, get it out of the way. Correct? So, I can go either way, can I? Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. No, no. Well, I was going to say that then how, I'm sorry, sorry I was just extrapolating, extrapolating the modern day and how I entered my head was Dick Cheney. Released Dick Cheney with that sense. I mean, he's getting, his whole being is just to be, just to, because it's safe, simple, and sure, and rest within this concept of right and not be in any way self-examinatory, in my understanding, then he's, he's just getting rid of this, 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 and this that's blocking what his ego self so, so, so it still, still could be... But still, still the bottom line is still the right, right intent and motive for doing things um, as, as it relates to what the creator would have us okay, so do. So you're talking about, so talking about ego, ego and likewise, likewise in the world, the ego, ego can do the same thing. thing. Do anything, anything it wants to move, move whatever is in its way. way. Yes. yes, same kind of scenario. scenario. Yeah. So so one, one is spiritual, one is um, one's more, one's more spiritual, one is more physical in a sense. One, one represents the higher um, realm, and one, one represents well, the true sense of self. Yeah. So, so then, uh, can we begin to say everything, everything is still playing, playing out, out from, from the beginning all the way to the, to the beginning? Um, so, so when we are upset, and, 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 and I, I, I think, think about the military, how we think, think about all these people are dying, American. Well, so so these consciousness are being destroyed. destroyed. I mean, I mean, it's the same thing to have. It's just so the same thing that you have to do is to get taken out of the earth. So, well, it's just a little bit. It's just a little bit. The issue, though, is it's a little bit different. Remember, uh, we were talking about uh, spiritual as well as physical. The thing that I just, Richard and I were just talking about. And the intent. From the perspective of militaries in general, is not a, necessarily a spiritual war. Right. No, 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 I don't think they know what they're doing. doing. Yeah. As far as you know, you know these putting all these people, people in harm's way, as we call it. Um, I honestly don't think. I'm not, I'm not saying, saying it's good that these people are dying, but the attitude of Americans, the materialist side of it, is it's dying. dying. And, and so, so my thing, thing is, I, I used to get upset because I said, no, you know, the military is having all these people die, get killed for no reason. But I honestly don't think America know what they're doing. They always just start destroying that materialism um, consciousness. Am I wrong with that? I don't see it destroying the materialism consciousness. I mean, these people die, because I always think about it. Yeah, it's not like the military is just like, oh, let's just kill them. Let me just talk about the U.S. Soldiers dying, they're just destroying them with material. Oh, I see what you said. Maybe I'm not putting it out there right, but. Did you say it? Because I don't know who they are. They suggest this is a consciousness level. Yeah, I think it's a conscious or understood strategy. And I would say out of the confusion, it is what's happening. Yeah. But like anything that, like this in the extreme that comes out of confusion, a lot of quote unquote, unquote innocence, innocence is, is being sacrificed. These 18 year old kids, and I sat on a plane to a few times, times coming, and I was really struck, struck by what I thought they, they did not know of the world, 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 and yet they were on the way to Fort Woodward or Jackson, Jackson here to do whatever they're going to be thinking, thinking this, you know, mm -hmm. it's hot stuff, stuff to be doing. doing. So, so this, this sort of, that's a, Okay, okay, collateral damage that, that comes with that sort of confusion. So yeah. well, the weight of all that confusion and what it maybe brings about may be resulting in the breakup of a lot of these things. And again, it is an opportunity to re-examine and see truth. It's also an opportunity to, to, to go to the chain, go to the other, close everything down, go harder that way, and be self-productive. The question is what's the intent? I want that phrase in the middle of it. I want that man to be remembered. One of the things about the Moabites is they become the enemy of God's people. So 
so Ruth, Ruth's ancestors, and you know, even, there, there was lots of conflict even around the period of when Ruth was born and in that time, uh, when Ruth was living in, in, uh, in Naomi, uh, who's the next uh, wife, was living in Moab. So, um, again, if you look at it from the perspective of um, consciousness, it is those thoughts, like the egotistical thoughts, et cetera, et cetera, that became the enemies of, you know what Paul talks about, the war that's in us? Mm -hmm. That's the war, that's the thoughts, that's, that's trying to, um, one, some, some types of thoughts battling against other thoughts, which are intent for good, intent for doing what the Creator would have us do. That's part of the war. All of this is this is just reflective of that internal war that's going on in each of us. And it doesn't matter how old we are, how old we get to be, we still have aspects of that war going on. Some of us have um, won some battles. Um, but what happens when you, when you are able to um, deliver yourself from one thing, something else pops up. It becomes another thing that becomes a, a challenge. Um, then you have to war and battle yourself out. And then when you're able to um, deal with that, I don't, I'm not saying crush it completely, but if you're able to deal with it and put it in its place, I don't have to worry about that, something else happens. And so all of this is to hone us and to, in a sense, purify us and, in a sense, perfect us. I don't know, does that resonate? There's a purpose in it. So, so that we, we know, know who we are, we know ourselves. Um, who took a deep breath out here? Vinegar, show me. Oh, I thought one of you guys took a deep breath. I mean, you get ready to talk. Okay. Because <laughs> I saw something. I heard something. All right, so the Moabites uh, eventually became folk who, well, you know, just about everybody who weren't people of God, who weren't from the Abrahamic uh, lineage, became. Um, what do you call them? Enemies, if you say, in a sense. And so all of that is the community that's in us. All right, oldest daughter had a Moab. Youngest daughter had a son called Benami, B-E-N-A-M-M-I. And he became the father of the Ammonites. Um, and Benami means son of my people. Moab meant. My father, mm -hmm. and I'm in the son of my people. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Pardon? There were two different, and, and you got that they're both sort of attitudes to. Um, the, the Moabites were a people who uh, sacrificed their babies, their children. Uh, they believed in lots of gods, and one god in particular, when he was angered, they used um, infant sacrifices. They would mark the infants ahead of time um, so they would know who would be sacrificed in the case the god got angry. And things started getting bad, or started having families, or whatever they perceived was what was happening because the god was getting angry. Um, the Ammonites. Let me see if I can find out, if I know anything about the Ammonites. Um, they're just another enemy in a sense. The Jordanians of today? The Moabites are the Jordanians of today. Hand hand. Shut up. Continuation. 
when I use when, when the word, word name, it is how appearance, in a sense, gazelle has to do with beauty and um, grace, thank you. And so, and then uh, one was Ruth. And Ruth's name meant um, friendship. Remember what the two sons' names were again? Sicklin. Honey. Sicklin. Okay. Why? That's probably it. Okay. After that, you got married, they lived in the land about 10 years. And both of these guys died. And both of these guys died. Now, one of my background really implied that at this point, they were, they uh, got killed in a battle because the Moabites were really attacking um, the folk from the Israelites. And they were, their father was an Israelite. They were, were, were fighting for the Moabites. Anyway, they got killed, they died, both of them. So, so here you have the woman who's lost, lost her husband. She's, she's lost, lost her two sons. In this, and they're surrounded by Moabites. And, 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 and the other thing, Elimelech, Elimelech, my God is king, took his family and, and went and went, went into the land of the Moabites. And they, they were already, already people who really didn't get along with each other to start, start with, but, but he took, took his family, family and that's, that's where he went to dwell. And, and so, so when he died and the two, two sons died, died here you have Naomi, who's left there, there in the middle of that, with her two daughters. So, so, I'm, I'm in verse six, six now, I don't know where y'all are. Hi, you know what I asked me? Where are you? Has told me there's a hand behind me, so I'm moving on. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. At some point, she decided to move away from Moab. So it's like, hey, I have nothing here. I don't have anybody I can marry. The lineage, um, it was a little bit left. Yeah. And she said, you know, he has land back there that he left, you know? He has an inheritance back there that he left as well. Um, so, so she, she heard, um, she heard, heard things, things were getting better back there. The family, family wasn't as bad. She said, I'm, I'm going to go back to my people. At least I know my people. Right here, I'm, I'm in the middle of, I'm in the middle of, 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 for the life of that word, strangers. So, so she, she told the daughters, I'm going back home. I want y'all to, you know, it's been good. Y'all have been real good daughters-in-laws. Daughters-in-law, I'm, I'm getting ready to go back to Bethlehem to the house of bread. Um, what you all, you're young enough. I want you to go and go back to your people and find another husband who can take care of you. I don't have that option right now. I'm too old. No, you know, even when she goes back, she's old. She's old, but she doesn't think. Well, nobody's gonna marry me. I'm gonna have a child this late in my life. But you, you two, you're young enough. You can go back to your people and find a husband, find a place, um, and continue to live. Uh, what does the daughter-in-law represent? The daughter's in law as far as consciousness, just just energies. Feminine energies. Okay. Unless these guys have another. That's all I see in terms of the daughters-in-law. They were married to these two guys. Um, the, the one of the daughters-in-law represented more um, materialistic kinds of stuff, more outward show, and the other. was just simply uh, um, upper realm and lower realm consciousness in a sense too. Okay. Um, anyway, the daughter starts crying. Sheldon. Yeah, Sheldon. Um, looking at the daughter in law, um, it has to do with the way they ride, the lady, um, um, in the trough, however, the one she's 
you go over and look at uh, Azul over there. Um, hold on. Am I not going to give it? I'll work a little bit. But it has to do, excuse me, it has to do with being uh, to be completely and to be perfect. Uh, to put a crown, to some crown. I mean, excuse me, to put a crown, to put a crown. But I don't want to know um, if that also has something to do with um, some type of program, not necessarily for those particular females, but the women being in the lives of whom, in the lives that they're in, is for what's added to them, um, which, which seems to be the way with the gazelle being added to one who is sick, with the gazelle being so strong, et cetera, and anything with the uh, rookie having to deal with uh, friendship, friendship of appearance, and beauty. Um, so I'm looking at some of the stuff that that's all I have for now. Okay, and the other moms represented promise, the promise of, um, you know, no, when they were married to the sons, the promise of um, children, and the promise of um, uh, the seed continuing, uh, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, we try to convince them, and they, they both weep. So we're not going to leave you. And, 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 and the, the, the daughter's law, law, in spite of Ruth being in this country, country they must have seen something, something in Ruth. They must, must have seen something even in the long way. Just, Just because, because we lose our focus doesn't, doesn't, mean, doesn't mean we lose everything. They, they had to have seen something positive, um, something godly, something spiritual that continued in these, in these people, even while they were sword, sojourning in a, in a hostile country. Because they were close. They didn't want to leave her. Um, but um, Ruth says, no. Nope. You, you need to go. And so um, Orpa decides, okay, I'll leave. I'll go back. So she's, you know, she's the one who's more tied to Muslim and beauty, those kinds of things. And she, she decides to go back. But Ruth, Ruth says, no, I'm not going back. I'm with you. And if you go down to, oh, <laughs> Go home, my daughters. I'm too old to get married. That's what she said. Even, Even if I thought there was hope that I could get married tonight and conceive sons, would you stay around until they got grown? No. You wouldn't do that. So don't wait on me. Go home. Find somebody. Um, my, my suffering here is too intense to bear. I need to go home to my people. Um, uh, she felt bereft. She felt left alone. She, she felt, felt um, almost betrayed in a sense that my husband brought me out of my country, deposited me here, and then he left, and I'm left here. So she, she felt cut off from the people. Um, so anyway, who says, stop urging me to, to, to leave. I'm not going to do it. You know, all the I, I don't, you know, you keep saying this, I am not going anywhere. I ain't moving. I stand right here. So, um, this is um, the part that a lot of people use in weddings. She said this. Entreat me not to leave Lee. This is the King James. We know what you read from. Or to return from following after Lee, for whither thou goest, I will go. And that's one thing. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Whoever your people are, they will be my people. But this is the kicker. She says, your God will be my God. Now, this is from all bodies that have previously worshipped all kinds of gods. But she saw something in Ruth. Her consciousness was open. And she said, your God will be my God. When you die, I'm going to die. And there I will be buried. And so uh, Ruth had more substance to her. Uh, she was more open. And this has to do with that seed that Sheldon was talking about in Lot's um, first son that, that carried on, that spiritual seed that carried on through the generation. One of the people that was deposited in there was Ruth. So, 
And when Ruth, when Naomi, Naomi realized Ruth was determined to go, when no way she was going to um, get her to turn around, she stopped trying to get her to do so. And, and so, so they went and they came to Bethlehem. Now, Elimelech and Naomi were well known to Bethlehem. So, so when they, they, these two came back to the city, city some people said, Is that Naomi? Is that Naomi? And, and she had lots of people who came to greet her. Uh, but Ruth told them to call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Mara means bitterness. I mean, God has not dealt well with me. He's taken my husband more times. Okay, I'm good. He's taken my husband. He's taken my two sons. And I'm left here. I have nobody to care for me. And she's got Ruth with her. So she's, you know, she's, she lost her. Like a little like lost, got distracted. Uh, Ruth is, I'm sorry, Naomi just is looking at what's happening to her. Everything's about me, 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 me. And so um, that kind of surfaces at this time. So she said, Oh, me, Mara, the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. He's just treated me harshly. So they returned. And they arrived in the house of bread at the time of harvest season. And that's the end of chapter one. Questions? First, when you got there, the house of bread, it was, or went to the place of bread, it was famine. Yeah. And now it's harvest time. Yeah. Oh, and one more. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, appearances are not always as they seem. When we believe what we believe, when we believe, and as we believe what we believe, and as we trust that which we trust, we can't let the external appearances affect that. A little more like that, and move this family. Um, so the house of bread, like Abr Abram's name was Abram, and then they started calling him Abraham, mm -hmm. father of many nations. Well, he was called father of many nations for many years before he actually became the father of many nations. So remember what we said, we have to learn to um, act on not what we see. But as a man thinketh in, in, in his heart, in his heart. That's, that's, that's where the action really is. The spiritual is more real than the physical that manifests. And so we have to, we have to begin to um, cling to that spiritual uh, thought. And it may take another generation before it manifests. Does that mean it's in the true? When we know that there is no time in the spiritual arena? There is, there, there is no past, present, future. Does that resonate best? The significance of Ruth and Isaac's word clinging to Naomi. Can you get into that? That's a good word to use. What, what, do you have, have a question or you just... Yeah, there, there is some significance there that yeah. she was willing to stay with her, where, um, Oprah? Oprah. 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 I'm, I'm kind of, I've moved forward uh, to uh, um, the next question. But um, earlier today, it was uh, asked why do people do the things that they do? It's because they uh, do not have the ability to see further, to see that they um, have an impact well beyond their physical uh, actions. Um, but that was at the beginning. Yeah. And I think um, with uh, Naomi and Ruth, I think Ruth was actually able to more so have of a perception and see beyond uh, the physical, which is what kept her there. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that she was timid and scared to, no. to go no. out on her own. No. Okay. This is her country. I don't, yeah, I don't think she saw it as a dire situation, um, the same with that Naomi saw it. I think she saw it uh, differently. Um, 
which um, I didn't, I have, haven't noticed uh, Ruth being very kind of, I don't want to say negative, but negative for lack of a better word, um, not as bitter, et cetera, um, how Naomi was. Isn't there duality there? Oh. That, that's always the duality. And, and I got you right. Ruth, uh, Ruth, Ruth lived in her country. That was her culture. She was familiar with the people. She was familiar with the surroundings. The, the reasonable thing would have been to go back, get married, and have children and continue on. But she saw something, and when you talked about clinging to Naomi, Naomi represented spiritual truth. And so when she grasped that, when she saw that, she was willing to uh, give up, make what secondary, just that. get rid of everything else in pursuit of that truth. So she left religion. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Her. Yes. Yeah. Well, well that was going to be my point that she she saw something in Naomi, a certain spiritual truth, mm -hmm. um, and that she didn't want to. And she said it. Your God will be my God. Mm -hmm. um, she was not going to give that up and go back to what she knew before, because she saw she saw a truth there. And. They lived among the Moabites, but that doesn't mean they lived as the Moabites lived. Mm -hmm. With the Limelech being, God is my king. I'm, I'm, you know, there was a certain uh, atmosphere within that family in spite of living amongst the heathens, so to speak. Shelby. Question, uh, comment, Sheldon? Oh, it was just one last thing. I mean, her name does mean female companion, so Who? it Who? was that. Uh, Ruth? Um, Ruth, excuse me. So it was as if, I mean, she was supposed to be there. <laughs> she was just playing the role in which she was supposed to play. And, and the other thing, too, is that, you know, if Elimelech, we said Elimelech lost his attraction, he did. And he went to Moab, and he did. If he had not gone to Moab, would Ruth have come back and been in the lineage? And so it was another <clears throat> situation of, of the creator, um, making things that looked like they were bad, or they were wrong, or they were out of order, he turned it for good, in a sense. So, even though Elimelech did that, he left the house of bread, he took his, he, he, he took his, he got distracted, whatever happened. Whatever, for whatever, whatever reason, he went to live and dwell amongst the enemies of his people. Uh, God turned that for good. Because out of the enemies, out of that darkness, out of that unawareness, out of that um, negativity, came Ruth, who later married into the family of the Israelites, and became. So the house of bread in. Yes. Sorry. So the house of bread in the land of praise was restored. Yes. Not yet, though. It's really going to be restored a little bit later. But it was, it was on the way. It was on the way. The blessing was on the way. Well, what, does, what does famine mean? Famine means hunger. But from a spiritual perspective, that's, that's, that's spiritual starvation and hunger. Okay. So Meaning, just, go ahead. I was just, it just hit me. That's interesting <clears throat> because that's what America... One of the big, big issues America's fighting now, this whole um, hunger issue, and I, and I find it interesting, um, food is like the new money, like if you have good, f good food versus bad food, and I find that interesting that you brought that back around the world, famine and hunger like right that. So that makes good sense to me now. In that period, that, that, there was war going on. Remember, things had begun to, right, 10 years later, things had settled down a little bit. But here for, there was hunger, literally physical hunger in the land, but it related to a spiritual starvation that had occurred when the Israelites began to take that, peak, that focus off of the Creator. So something else happened between them leaving That's right. and Ruth, oh, what's her name? And Naomi, and Naomi, Naomi and Ruth coming back. Yes. So, okay, a lot of things What was happening when Elimelech <clears throat> left had to do with, with um, um, uh, wars and uh, lots of things were happening in that area to the, the Israelites, which, which um, 
ended up resulting in famine and not enough food to eat, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the point is, before that physical manifestation occurred, a spiritual famine yeah. had occurred. And now there's a harvest. Well, now as they come back into the city, there's a harvest. harvest time. It's about 10 years later. What does 10 mean, guys? New government, new, the laws and new, new government. What does 10 mean, government? Yeah, um, 10 um, just by itself means a new, the, the implementation in the day of the seed that was in the water. Um, I'm sorry, say again, the... The implementation in the many of the seed or the essence that was in the one. Ah. So one all the way to ten. So ten is just another amplification of that one. Okay. So it's, it's like the, the full expression of something. Um, it also means law, testimony, responsibility. Uh, okay. It's 11.46. I don't know if I want to go into chapter 2 yet. Have you have a question about chapter 1? I thought I'd be through today. I have one. But I made it to Ruth! <laughs> Why is the harvest called a barley harvest? What what significance about barley? Is it a hardy type of wheat or something? Barley was one of those grains that was... Um, they don't grow wheat in the Mideast. Hmm? They don't grow wheat in the Mideast. No. No, but there was another harvest after the barley harvest. There was another one. Um, it was, it was, I, 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 my word, poor man's grain. It was easy to grow. Um, it was accessible. Um, <clears throat> it was um, grown um, in uh, June, <clears throat> July, before the August area. Um, what else do I remember about barley? Don't they make beer out of barley? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you can make stuff out of it, yeah. Used to. <laughs> bread, oh. bread too. Stuff you drink doesn't have out of it. Bread too, so thank you. Well, <laughs> look on the label. <laughs> Meal and grain, young mm. But anyway, it was the season of that harvest. Um, and this was next, this was um, the barley season is just before the, um, one of those festivals. I can't remember which one. But it was one of those festivals. As I go on, maybe I'll remember. Okay. Other questions? So here Ruth arrives in Bethlehem with her mother-in-law. Is she still the mother-in-law if they don't have, if she's not married to the brother-in-law? That's a, that's a new, new age question, but that's okay. <laughs> she's her mother in spirit. <laughs> so, okay, so Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a man who was wealthy, who was well-known, um, and who was related to her, um, and his name was Boaz. Okay, and the plot begins to thicken. You remember who Boaz was, right? Right? You remember how he got here, right? Through the line of Judah, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I'll stop today, y'all. Let us go home and read. I think I'll stop yeah, yeah. yeah, we need to read. <laughs> I, I, I need some. I need some more. <laughs> I need you to be asking questions because that drives. <laughs> so what we'll do next time, if pastor is not, scholars. if pastor is not uh, ready to teach next time, we'll start with root two. You know you're gonna be up in. Next we will week. start with root two next time. Stop ignoring me. <laughs> we want to find out about Ruth now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ruth is a type of, um, I mean, this whole thing about Ruth is a type of, um, talks about the kinsman redeemer, and it's a foreshadowing of what happens when, uh, with what the Messiah uh, did for, um, does for us. Well, is that, and every time you do something, you open up something for the universe, so 
apparently it's been opened up, but it's just different. But you know, different things happen each time you open. So yeah. Anyway. Okay. That's where we'll stop today. Who's going to teach next week? Route two. Miss Barbara. Sheldon. And Nick. Sheldon, you're a reporter. Like a reporter in Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> you're in Afghanistan. 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 you are in afghanistan you are in you is Rania the Secretary of State? <laughs> we were giving you roles along with Nick and Sheldon. Are you Secretary well, of State? I was about to say, I, I'm fine. I'll just, you know, I'll, 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 I'll handle it, whatever it is. <laughs> okay. um, any other questions today? I don't, I, I don't know why we're doing this now, so, but it's not important that I know it. Okay. Other than to get it in the macro, yeah. um, it is what it is, and we'll pull everything we can out of it until and if we come back to it again, there will be a new truth that we get from it. So, thanks very much for your questions and your comments. Did they get a new pope? Yeah. Hmm? Did they get a new pope? Oh, I thought I missed it. <laughs> Mom, can you, stay, can you stay on when everyone goes? Uh, yeah. I just, I mean, stay on. I, I can't do the video when we're in conference. Oh, uh, that's right. You're on an iPad, aren't you, Rania? Yeah. Okay. Well, I uh, Kindle, but yeah. Okay. Janice, can I stay on afterwards? Uh, I have to ask. Them. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's all for today. Then thank you very much for your participation. Um, the truth of the light that you are and that I am and the light of the truth that we all are, has us to know that we are kinsmen redeemers for the world. We are kinsmen redeemers for the world. So think about that as we talk about not just Ruth and not just Naomi, but what's behind all of that. Okay? Amen. Mm -hmm.